So, you've just made the new blocks following my first tutorial, but you want them to do some special stuff. Like, look, this is glowing. And if I mine it with my hand, I don't get anything. If I mine it with a stone pick, I don't get anything. But if I use an iron pick, oh, or a diamond pick, I get random stuff. And did you hear that noise it just made? When things land on top, it plays special sounds. And what about making it that you walk slow when you're on it? Let's go have a look at the components, shall we? So straight into bridge, I'm carrying this on from my last tutorial on how to make very basic custom blocks. But this time I'm actually gonna run through some of the components with you. So if we have a look on the left here, we've got the custom block, which I made from scratch. And you can see there is loads going on there. I will break that down in a moment. And then you will see the preset block. Now, here's the thing. In this preset block, if we click components, you're going to see that actually there isn't many components we can add. And that is because the preset, if we look at the format version, still works in 1.16.0. Okay, if we look at the custom block that I made, it's 1.16.100. Now, you guys may be working on 117. I don't know. I'm still using the preferred version that Bridge recommends. So what I'm going to do is come into the format version and I'm going to change this zero here to 100. Press enter. And now if I click on components and add object, you can see here, we have got loads and loads of different stuff. So I'm going to just briefly sort of run through, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the what's what basically. So you can see straight away at the top, block light emission. And as you could probably guess, the other block that I've got does emit light. Hence why I was, it was nighttime and you could see that block lighting up. So block light emission, we can click that and you can click how much light you want it to emit. So I'm going to go 0 0.9 there and that block now will emit light. Okay. Block light absorption is, so once you get a bit more comfortable, you may want to try and make something like glass or leaves or something with like a transparency to it. And what you will find is, is that it will create a shadow underneath itself when you're looking through. So what you want to do here is block, block light absorption and set that to... It's going to either be zero or if that error is, it's going to be 0 0.1. Now, this isn't a complete and utter walkthrough this episode. This is sort of me giving a little showcase of some of the components. So you can play around and I can sort of give you a heads up as to what some of the things might do. So I'm going to remove that block light absorption because it's an opaque block. And if we go back into the components, uh, we've got flammable here. So, so a little bit like wood, you can choose the odds of it burning and then destroying and also the odds of fire spreading so i think for instance wall is probably more flammable than wood we also have a loot which i will show you on the other block in a moment but basically as it stands this block when broken it doesn't matter how you break it is gonna drop itself okay and actually what what we'll do is i'll quickly load up minecraft and show you that so here we are back in the game and if I punch this you can see there that it blocks itself it blocks itself sorry it drops itself as a block and that's not going to matter whether you're using your hand or if you're using any kind of pick and you can see here as well that the pick doesn't actually matter what pick I'm using the speed doesn't change now there's no way at the moment of changing how quick the pickaxes mine these blocks so the custom blocks aren't affected by the vanilla pickaxes if that makes sense but if you did want a specific pickaxe to mine the block quicker then have a look at my tool tutorial and you'll be able to see there how to change the block breaking speeds and then you could actually add your custom block to your custom tool and speed it up as you break it so carrying on looking at the components there's a couple here that maybe you won't use or I'm not completely sure about like the unit cube um, crafting table is very cool it will actually turn your block into a crafting table so you can right click it and then you can apply your own recipes so if you've already seen my 
recipe tutorial and how you select whether you're using a crafting table, a furnace, etc., etc. You could give this block the crafting table tag, and then when you then uh, create your recipes, you can define that you want this custom block to be the block that's being used. Okay, and you can see here that you can even have a custom description. The grid size is by default is three by three. You can't change that at the moment. And the crafting tags off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure about, but have a play around with that. It's a really cool thing to do. And I'm actually using it in a current project I'm working on. Um, what else have we got? Material instances I wouldn't worry too much about. And geometry, for these blocks I wouldn't worry about, but I will have a tutorial up for uh, a custom geometry block. So like half slabs or blocks that aren't a full block basically. Uh, your cauldrons, your enchantment table and stuff like that. Now on step on and on step off, you can actually trigger events and I will show you that as well as the on player destroyed on the next block. Okay, on full on again, this will allow you to you know, do certain events, conditions and whatnot. Um, you could, I'd imagine maybe you could set that up like a slime block. Uh, but back in here, what else have we got? On player destroyed. So again, when the player destroys it, you can trigger an event. But I'll show you that on the next one. Uh, the same as placed or the player placing, interact. Ticking means that you can actually have it run events um, or, or do certain things whenever it ticks entity collision and pick collision we will get to in a future video um break on push is if a piston pushes it will it break so i'm trying to think of an example i think um like a plant pot breaks when you push it immovable means basically like obsidian and your terracotta i believe actually no terracotta can be moved um, but obsidian can't, and I don't think furnaces can either. Uh, breathability means that if your head is trapped in it, can you still breathe? It's a bit like a leaf block. You can still breathe if your head's stuck in a leaf. Only piston push would mean that it can be pushed by piston. So this is the terracotta thing. It can be pushed around, but it won't stick to a sticky piston. Okay. Then we have placement filter. So this would be like sugarcane that can only be placed on sand or dirt next to water. The same as uh, saplings, for instance, or crops. Okay, they can only be placed on certain blocks. Uh, prevent jumping is going to be like the honey block. Rotation, uh, again, I will actually get to in another, another video because... The rotation doesn't matter too much on this block because it's the same texture on all sides. Um, we have unwalkable, which basically means that mobs will avoid walking on it. And then the display name, which we don't have to worry about because we've set that up in our, in our text, in our resource pack. If you remember in texts in our language file, we've got that here, the display name. The good thing about using this means that if you had multiple language files, then each different language would have a different display name. If you don't want to go down that route, then by all means, use, use the display name at the bottom here. Okay. Now, I've kind of gone over the custom block that you saw there. So I've, I've given it loads of explosion resistance there. So if I was to try and blow it up, it probably won't. The friction here at 0.9 um, means you walk really slow over it, okay? Uh, and then, yeah, I didn't change much else just because it was stuck in the format version 1.16. Um, I have obviously, as you can see, updated that. Now, if we look at the actual custom block, the one that was lit up, and I minimize some of these so I can show you one by one what's what. Okay, so we obviously had the block light emission and you saw it was lit up. It was glowing. Okay, now what I've done is with Minecraft loot, this component, I've then attached a loot table and it's called loot tables stroke or dash empty. And if we actually look over to the left here, I'm not going to completely go through how loot 
loot tables work, but I will give you a brief rundown. So you can see I've got two loot tables. If I click on the loot table empty, you will see here that it's got rolls. So how many, imagine a dice. Okay, so we're going to roll that dice once. Okay, and the only entry is air. So it doesn't matter what happens, this loot pool, this loot table will always return with air. Okay, so the, the way this is set up is basically the loot for this block is air, it's nothing. Okay, but what we can do is with this component here, this Minecraft on player destroyed, this will allow me to run an event. Okay, so in here, I've got an event which is custom block loot and then down here I've actually got so if you were to click on Minecraft block up here you could then actually add where it says permutations you could add events okay and then in the event tab you can then basically add an event so I can go custom underscore event and then you can run whatever you want in that event so you know again i'm not going to go over the top with how to how to do different events um but you can run different commands you can add effects etc etc events were covered briefly on my tool tutorials so you might already have a bit of an understanding anyway but in this case so on player destroyed it's going to run the event custom block loot okay and in custom block loot it's going to spawn loot and it's going to spawn the loot from this table and the table is the loot tables custom block loot so you can see here that i have another loot table called custom block loot and then in here it might be quite complicated for you guys to get your head around as i say i'm not doing loot tables in this um, tutorial as such but you can sort of briefly see here that we're going to roll twice well a minimum of one roll a maximum of two so if we only roll the once it's going to look and with a weight of one it could spawn diamonds between one and three with a weight of two it could spawn between two and three emeralds and with a weight of seven it can spawn between four and eight iron ingots so imagine we only get one roll okay so it rolls one dice imagine that one dice and that dice is going to have because i've got a weight of one a weight of two and a weight of seven that totals 10 okay so imagine a dice with 10 sides the dice gets rolled and there's a chance that one side will give you the diamonds there's two sides of emerald and there's seven sides of that dice as the iron ingot if it falls on one of the iron ingot sides as such then there's a chance to get between either four or eight iron ingots. Okay, so you might not get your head around that, but as I said, this isn't me explaining how, how loot tables work. It's explaining how this block, if you have an empty hand, or you know, if you're not meeting the criteria, we're going to have an empty loot table. But if the player's destroyed it, and if this condition here, so if we look at this condition now, it says query dot get equipped item name equals iron pickaxe okay and then i've got or so these lines here i'm not actually sure off the top of my head what these lines are called okay they're down next to your z key if you press shift and then use that there's like two little lines next to the z key press shift and do that and you'll get this and what this means is or okay so query get equipped item name iron pickaxe or query get equipped item name diamond pickaxe or get equipped item name neverite pickaxe so as long as you've got the iron pickaxe or the diamond pickaxe or the neverite pickaxe then the condition has been met and run the event custom block loot okay it's definitely worth having a play around with this i might be butchering the explanation um but it's definitely worth worth learning and as i mentioned on my bridge setup tutorial uh check the description below i do have a link to the bridge discord and my discord so if you get really really stuck you can go and ask for help 
Um, and the last thing I want to cover before we wrap this up is the on step on. So when the block is stepped on, and as you saw at the beginning, even when items drop on the block, it triggers this event. So on step on, we're going to run an event. The event I've called step on. Okay, and you can see here in my events tab, I have an event called step on and I've got it to play a sound and the target is self. So that means the block itself is going to play the sound and the sound I've chosen is the conduit activate. Okay, it's just a random sound that I picked out. I mean, if I delete this here, you can see play sound. We're going to go sound and you can see there's all these different sounds. So let's go um i don't know <laughs> i'm trying to think now uh, cat hiss why not okay so i'm going to control save that and we will go back in load up the world and you'll see now that when i step on them blocks Okay, so perfect example, that one doesn't work, which is fine because this is where the testing comes in, okay? You can you can do all sorts of testing around. So I'm going to delete that sound. We're going to add the sound back on and let's find, I wonder if any of the mob ones actually work. Uh, raid horn, I wonder if that'll work. Hopefully it does, otherwise this is, this is going to be a little bit embarrassing. I'm trying all these sounds out. <laughs> so what that you could kind of set yourself up with like an alarm thing yeah you could have you could make this and then put it by your door and when someone walks in <laughs> you'll have a horn go off and it is relative to the block i don't know if you noticed there it did get a little bit quieter as i moved away um but yeah that's about it. I just wanted to give a bit of a rundown on how some of the different components work and how you can trigger events and loot tables. Um, a lot of it you need to play around with yourself or look into how the loot tables and events work. So make sure you're checking out the, uh, the bedrock.dev website. And there's also, I'll try and make sure I, I link it down below. There's also a wiki.bedrock.dev, which doesn't um have everything on there but it does have a lot of good tutorials that are different to how i do them it's got lots of examples you could almost copy and paste it over um so yeah definitely check that out link will be in the description below but i'm going to leave it there and i'm going to get to work on a few more block tutorials like custom ge geometry and stuff and what about blocks like logs where depending on how you place them depends on the rotation yeah i think we can do that so thanks a lot for watching hope you enjoyed it if you did hit that like button on the way out and until next time take care stay cool bye bye